You think you can see far, right? On a clear day, you might look out your window and spot a distant hill, maybe even a mountain miles away. It feels impressive until you realize how incredibly limited your eyes truly are. Most people can only see about three miles before the earth itself curves away and hides everything else. Even the tallest buildings begin to disappear behind the horizon. At sea level, standing on the beach, the farthest edge you can see is just over three miles away. That's it. Now imagine standing on top of one of the tallest skyscrapers in the world. Even then, with a perfect view and zero clouds, you might stretch that visibility to about 60 miles. Sounds like a lot? In reality, that's nothing. Just a speck on the map of Earth. And Earth itself? That's a speck inside the solar system. So what happens when we zoom out? When we stop relying on our tiny eyes and instead try to see the universe? Let's start zooming out. Imagine boarding a plane. You're now cruising at 35,000 feet, roughly seven miles above the ground. From up here, you can see maybe 200 to 250 miles across if the sky is perfectly clear. That's about the distance from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. But even from that height, you're not seeing anything close to space. The boundary where space officially begins, called the Kármán line, is about 62 miles straight up. That's nearly nine times higher than your airplane seat. Above that, the sky turns black. Not dark, black. Because at that height, the atmosphere becomes too thin to scatter light. The International Space Station orbits at about 250 miles above Earth. That's about the same as the drive from New York City to Washington DC. Still, from down here, you can't see it. You can't even see the rockets that go there unless someone points them out. Our eyes weren't designed for this. They were made for trees, predators, and sunsets, not galaxies. Now let's leave Earth entirely. The moon, that glowing dot in our night sky, sits around 238,900 miles away. To put that in perspective, if you could drive there at 60 miles per hour without stopping, it would take you nearly six months. And yet, to your eyes, it's just a coin-sized light. That's how weak our vision is. Now think about the sun, 93 million miles from Earth. It's so far that light, traveling at 186,000 miles per second, still takes over eight minutes to reach us. You never see the sun in real time. You're always looking into the past. Even farther out, we find Pluto, a cold, lonely world about 3.6 billion miles away. At that distance, sunlight takes over five hours to arrive. From here, it's invisible to the naked eye. In fact, all of this, the moon, the sun, Pluto, are still inside our solar system, a single family of planets orbiting one star. But even that entire system is a mere pinprick on a much, much larger canvas. Let's step outside our solar system. The closest star to Earth after the sun is Proxima Centauri. It's about 4.24 light years away. That's 25 trillion miles. If you wanted to drive there at 60 miles per hour, nonstop, it would take you over 48 million years. Let that sink in. And that's just the nearest star. In a sky full of twinkling dots, every single one of them is a sun, many with their own planets scattered across distances our minds can barely hold. From Earth, we see them as tiny specks, yet each one could dwarf our sun in size, power, or age. And remember, the light from many of those stars has been traveling for hundreds, even thousands of years to reach your eyes. You're seeing them not as they are, but as they were, long before you were born. Some of them might not even exist anymore. What your eyes show you is just a fading echo, not the real universe. Now zoom even farther. All those stars you see, they live inside a galaxy called the Milky Way, a vast rotating disk that's about 100,000 light years wide. That means even if you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you 100,000 years just to cross our own galaxy. And how many stars are in the Milky Way? Roughly 100 billion. From Earth, we can't even see 1% of them with the naked eye. In fact, we can barely grasp where we sit inside this structure, like a grain of sand floating in a sea of stars. And beyond the Milky Way, there are over 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Many of them make our galaxy look small, some are thousands of times bigger. The space between them is so vast that entire galaxy clusters vanish from our sight. Even with the most powerful telescopes on Earth, we can only see a small fraction. You? You're looking up at just a few scattered lights, blind to the rest. Now comes the most mind-bending part, the observable universe, the part we can technically detect, stretches about 93 billion light years across. That's not because the universe is only that big, it's just that light hasn't had time to reach us from anything farther. And thanks to the universe's constant expansion, there are parts we'll never see, no matter how long we wait. Some galaxies are moving away from us so fast that their light will never reach Earth, ever. That means entire regions of space, possibly containing trillions of stars and planets, are permanently invisible. It's not just that your eyes can't see them. No human technology ever will. And all of this? 
It started from a single point 13.8 billion years ago in the event we call the Big Bang. Since then, the universe has grown into something so massive, so untouchable, that even our imagination struggles to keep up. And through all of that, you've only seen a tiny, tiny piece. So what does it mean to be practically blind in the universe? It means that the universe, in all its vastness, complexity, and beauty, hides most of itself from you. Your eyes were never meant to witness the cosmos. They were designed for nearby movement, for spotting danger, for reading faces, not for chasing galaxies. And yet, here you are, a small human on a tiny planet, standing under an infinite sky, trying to understand what's beyond. Maybe that's the miracle, that despite our blindness, we still wonder. We launch telescopes, we ask questions, we reach with thoughts when our hands cannot. The universe is vast, cold, ancient, but our curiosity is louder. Our eyes may not see far, but our minds? They travel light years in a second. You are practically blind in the universe, but you were never meant to see everything. You were meant to search.